Well, good morning, first grade, are you here? Well, I hope you are here, although this is very different today because now is parent-teacher conferences the next two days, and so I'm not really teaching a lesson today or tomorrow or next week because next week is vacation week, but I am going to try to log on every morning at 9 o'clock and I am going to read the stories of Tiptoes Lightly and maybe some Reddy Fox, Peter Rabbit, Bowser the Hound, Jimmy Skunk, Johnny Woodchuck, and all those friends from the Thornton Burgess books, and uh, maybe a few other things, some picture books of various sorts. So I hope to read um, some every morning. I am going to be down in Volcano for a few days, so I'm not sure if Monday and Tuesday I'll be able to log on, but I will try. All right, and if I don't, I'll post something um, later in the day so that there'll be something at least, even if it's not at nine o'clock in the morning. All right, so, oh, I have my little friend here. She is sitting and listening to the story of Tiptoes as well. I'll put her right here. One more drink of coffee. So we read about Tiptoes um, helping the bee who lost his buzz and singing to the tadpole um, last time. That was weeks ago. You might not even remember, but here's the way this one goes. Tiptoes wakes up Jeremy Mouse rudely. Oh, my. Tiptoes woke up. The sun was smiling. Running River was rocking the boat to and fro, to and fro. Jeremy Mouse was still asleep, curled up in a tiny ball. His tail was not around his head. It had uncurled itself and hung over the edge of the boat. Tiptoes leaned over to see if it was in the water. It was, and wiggling just a little bit like a worm. And Pike, the big fish, had opened his mouth to bite it. Tiptoes grabbed... Can you see that? Tiptoes grabbed the tail and pulled with all her might. The fish's toothy mouth closed with a snap. Tiptoes fell backwards in the boat and Jeremy Mouse woke with a scream. Squeak, he cried, jumping up and pulling his tail out of Tiptoes' hands. You don't have to pull my tail to wake me up, you know. I'm sorry, said Tiptoes, but Pike, the big fish, thought your tail was a worm and was going to eat it. So I pulled it quickly and fell over. I didn't mean to wake you up so rudely. Jeremy Mouse looked at the sun. The sun was laughing. He looked at his tail. It was still in one piece, though perhaps a little sore. And the end was wet, and it did look just a little bit like a worm. So he helped Tiptoes up and said, I'm hungry, where can we get breakfast? No matter what happened to Jeremy Mouse, he did not go long without being hungry. He was a growing mouse. Let's visit Pinecone and Pepper Pot before it gets too late, said Tiptoes, and off they went. Pinecone and Pepper Pot are not at home. Pinecone and Pepper Pot were not at home. They lived underneath an old pine tree in the forest. Where are they, wondered Tiptoes. I'm hungry, said Jeremy Mouse, sniffing around the kitchen. Look, they left pancakes. On the table sat two of the biggest pancakes Tiptoes had ever seen, golden brown, perfectly cooked, and covered with butter and maple syrup. Oh, they are so sniffable, said Jeremy Mouse. They make my tail curl. Let's eat. Tiptoes, being just a little fairy, only ate a tiny bit of her pancake. She didn't like eating too much because it was so much harder to fly. But Jeremy Mouse didn't fly. He didn't even like to fly, and he began to nibble. And as he nibbled, he turned the plate round and round, nibbling at the edge of the pancake. The pancake stayed perfectly round, but got smaller and smaller until there was no pancake at all. I wonder where Pinecone and Pepper Pot went in such a hurry, said Tiptoes. They must have been in a great rush if they left their pancakes uneaten. There was no reply from Jeremy Mouse. He had curled up in the corner and fallen fast asleep. He was having his after-breakfast snooze. Ah, fish sticks, said Tiptoes. I'll have to find them myself, and flew out the window.
Ompliant is unplugged. Tiptoes flew high. She liked to fly high. Though once a swallow tried to eat her, thinking she was a mosquito. That's kind of a bird. She bonked the swallow on the nose and said, I'm no fly, I'm a fairy. Go away, Mr. Swallow. And he had flown away, rubbing his nose and looking surprised. I never had no problem from no bug before, he muttered to himself. Tiptoes flew up and up until the forest and river were way down below. I wonder where Pinecone and Pepperpot are, she thought, looking for their red caps amongst the green trees and fields. Suddenly she saw Ompliant the elephant sitting on a tree stump. His trunk stuck straight out in front of him, and Pinecone and Pepperpot were pulling on it with all their might. What are you doing, cried Tiptoes. You might pull his trunk off. Oh, oh, sobbed Ompliant. I have an apple stuck in my twonk. I was eating apples from the apple twee, and I weeched up really high for a delicious one, and it fell into my twonk and won't come out, and Pinebone and Petterpot, Pettertot are trying to pull it out. Sure enough, there was an apple stuck in Ompliant's trunk, a big, round, juicy apple, but it was stuck fast. What shall we do? What shall we do? cried Pinecone and Pepperpot together. Shake the pepper out of your beard, Pepperpot, said Tiptoes. Pepperpot was called Pepperpot not only because he had a hot temper, but also because he loved pepper. He shook so much of it onto his food and shook the pepper so hard that the pepper also flew into his beard. Hmm. Uh... If you ever hug Pepperpot, you sneeze straight away. So Pepperpot shook his beard in Ompliant's face. Ha, ha, said Ompliant. Ha, 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 said Ompliant. Ha, 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 choo, sneezed Pompliant, as loud as only an elephant can sneeze. The apple flew out of his trunk like a rocket, but Pinecone and Pepperpot did not think they should duck down until it was too late. Quicker than a wink, off went Pinecone's hat and off went Pepperpot's hat too. Carried by the apple, their hats sailed over the trees in a flash of red. Oi, 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 shouted Pinecone and Pepperpot. Our hats! Oh, thank you so much, said Ompliant the elephant. I'm going home to rest after having such a big sneeze. And he lumbered into the forest. Our poor hats, cried the gnomes. What shall we do? Let's find them, said Tiptoes. And off they went. The hats appear. The hats were not to be found. Pinecone and Pepperpot looked under roots and rocks. Tiptoes searched all the treetops, but the hats were gone. This is a disaster, said Pinecone. A big disaster, e echoed Pepperpot. And they sat down and chewed on the ends of their beards. Gnome beards are precious. They are grown over hundreds of years and are never chewed unless upset. Pinecone and Pepperpot were very upset. What are you looking for, asked the cricket. Who, they, who saw that they were searching for something. Our hats, said the gnomes. Chirp, chirp, said the cricket. I saw them sailing through the air that away, pointing towards Spider's house. So they went to Spider's house. What are you looking for? asked Spider. Our hats, said Pinecone and Pepperpot. Spin, spin, said the spider. I saw them flying through the air that away, pointing towards Snail's house. So they went to Snail's house, but Snail was not to be found. It had moved. I'm going home, grumped Pepperpot. I've had enough looking for one day. And he stomped away. Pinecone and Tiptoes followed behind. There you are, cried Jeremy Mouse when they arrived home. Look what I found. And he held up the two red hats. Where did you find them, cried the gnomes. We've been looking everywhere. They flew in the window along with a juicy apple, exclaimed Pep Jeremy Mouse. I ate the apple. By our beards, exclaimed Pinecone and Pepperpot, looking at their hats carefully to see if they were damaged. They're all in one piece. And they put them on. Worm loses his squirm. The gnomes were frying fresh pancakes. But Jeremy Mouse was full. His tummy felt like a balloon. He sat down in the tall grass close to the pine tree and listened to the birds. Caw, said the crow as he flew overhead. Rat-a-tat-tat-tat, when a woodpecker deep in the woods. Chick-a-dee-dee-dee, chick dee 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 called the chickadee family to each other. Chirp, 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 chirped the cricket from the top of a plume of grass. 
He wasn't a bird, but he sang anyway. Jeremy Mouse also heard a small voice crying, Help, help! He looked around, but saw nothing. Help, help! cried the voice again. Jeremy Mouse spotted a worm just outside of its hole. He was lying very still and was stretched out as straight as straight can be. Help, help, cried the worm again without moving. What's wrong, asked Jeremy Mouse. Why are you so still and why are you so straight as straight can be? I've lost my squirm, sniffed worm. He ran away. You've lost your squirm, said Jeremy Mouse, looking puzzled. I, I didn't know worms had squirms. Where are they? Don't you know, said the worm. Every worm has a squirm. That's how we crawl around. That's how we wiggle if you pick us up. My squirm has run away and I can't move. I'll get tiptoes, said Jeremy Mouse. She'll know what to do. And he scurried away quickly. What do you see down there? Squirried, scurried away quickly. Where is that part? She'll know what to do. Oh, how did you lose your squirm, dear worm? Asked Tiptoes when she arrived. She liked worms and knew that every worm has a squirm. Oh, Tiptoes, said the worm. I wiggled out of my hole early this morning and Robin Redbreast, the mighty worm eater, flew low overhead. My squirm got such a fright he ran away and now I can't move. Jeremy Mouse and Tiptoes searched all around for squirm but couldn't find him. Where would he hide, asked Tiptoes, asked Worm. We can't find him. Look in my house, said Worm. It's safe down there. Tiptoes looked into the house of Worm, and sure enough, there was Worm's squirm. He was wiggling and shaking and looking scared. Come up, little squirm, said, called Tiptoes. It's safe now. But Squirm stayed down below. He was afraid. Tiptoes made herself small and flew into the house of Worm. Poor Squirm, she said. You look so afraid. I'll give you courage. And she touched Squirm with her wand. Instantly, Squirm was not afraid and wiggled up the hole. As soon as he got outside, he squirmed into Worm and Worm could squirm again. Thank you, Tiptoes and Jeremy Mouse, said Worm. It's horrible to lose your squirm. And he wiggled back into his house. The wind blows. That night, the wind blew. It blew hard. The rain hammered on the windows, and the branches of the old pine tree creaked and groaned. Jeremy Mouse and Tiptoes were glad they had stayed at Pinecone and Pepperpot's house. They were warm and dry inside, while the wild storm danced outside. Jeremy Mouse was curled up on the rug near the fireplace, and Tiptoes lay on the wool inside the spinning basket. Pinecone and Pepperpot slept in their twin beds. They were snoring, but not as loud as the wind was roaring. Roar, shouted the wind. I'll shake your house. I'll wake you up, even Jeremy Mouse. But the pine tree was too strong and only dug her roots deeper into the ground. She said, blow, wind, blow, blow as hard as you know. My roots shall deeper grow. I love rain and snow, so blow, wind, blow. And the wind blew but Jeremy Mouse, Tiptoes, Pinecone, and Pepperpot were safe and sound asleep in the old pine tree. Octopus is untangled. In the morning, Hummingbird flew in the window. Octopus has tangled up his legs again, she, he announced, and flew out of the window in a flash. Not again, grumbled Pepperpot. Now we'll have to go to the sea. Hooray, cried Tiptoes and Pinecone. They liked the seaside. Can we eat breakfast first, asked Jeremy Mouse. After pancakes and strawberries, they went down to Running River. Pinecone and Pepperpot had their own boat. It was a real boat with bamboo oars. They found it in a sandbox at Farmer Br John's. It was called Skylark, and Pinecone had painted its name in blue on the side. Where's our boat, cried Jeremy Mouse. It's gone, exclaimed Tiptoes. Sure enough, their acorn boat was nowhere to be seen. The storm must have blown it away. Our boat is big enough for all of us, said Pinecone. Let's go. So into the boat they climbed. Pepperpot rowed them into the middle of Running River, and Running River carried them away. The sun was smiling, 
she had chased the storm away, and only fluffy round clouds were floating high in the sky. They passed Big Rock, where Turtle sat in the sun. He waved hello. They passed the house of Duck, but she was not home. She lived in the reeds. Soon they saw the sea. Sea waves were crashing on the shore, and seagulls sailed in the air. Pepper Pot rode to the river bank, and they pulled Skylark out of the water. Let's find Octopus first, said Tiptoes. Octopus lived in the rock pools. He can change the color of his skin and is very hard to find. Tiptoes peered into a rock pool. It looked like a garden. She saw purple mussels, green sea lettuce, a starfish, two red crabs, three sea snail snails inside their shells, but no octopus. Here he is. Here he is. I found him, called Pepper Pot. Come quick. Octopus was in a large rock pool hidden by some seaweed, and his legs were very tangled up. He looked like a squirmy ball. Oh, Octopus, sighed Tiptoes. Have you been counting your legs again? Octopus was very young and could only count to seven. When he counted his legs, there was always one leg left over. Then he would start counting again, beginning with the leftover leg but then another leg would be left over. Soon he was tangled up in a squirmy ball and couldn't swim. Silly. Pinecone lifted Octopus from the pool. It was hard to work untangling all his legs. You have eight legs, said Pinecone, and he counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's eight? asked Octopus, looking puzzled. Never mind, sighed Pinecone. We will throw you back in the pool, will we? Yes, please, said Octopus. So they threw him in with a splash. Tiptoes walks along the shore. Tiptoes walked along the shore. Waves were rolling onto the sand, and one wave tried to catch her feet. Tiptoes spread her wings and lifted it, flitted into the air above the rushing water. She laughed. She liked to taste the waves to tease the waves, and the waves laughed too. She saw water sprites playing in the sea where the waves came crashing down. Come play, called the sprites, but Tiptoes couldn't play in the water like they could. She was a tree elf. Come wind, she called, blow the waves white, blow with all your might. The wind blew, the waves grew huge, and the water sprites sang, Tiptoes tells the wind to blow, we, the waves grow high and tall, they wear, all wear crowns as white as snow, and with a crash they fall. Then the water sprites swam and dived with glee in and out of the foamy sea. Pinecone and Pepperpot eat crab. Pinecone and Pepperpot stayed by the rock pools. They found small crystals with pink streaks in the rocks. Pinecone found one that was white as snow. It glistened in the sun. Suddenly the wind started blowing. Why is the wind blowing so hard? asked Pinecone. Don't know, replied Pepperpot. It wasn't blowing a minute ago. See how big the waves are. They found a rock pool out of the wind and hunkered down. Sing your crab song, said Pepper Pot. Pinecone sang, Underneath the water blue, is there a crab in this rock pool? If there is, then let us see. Out you come on the count of three. One, two, three. There was a crab in the rock pool. It scuttled sideways out of the water and stopped in front of them. Who called? asked Crab. I did, said Pinecone. Did you hear me calling? I heard you, replied Crab, and my legs walked me up here without my permission. How did you do that? It's my crab calling song, replied Pinecone. We're looking for crystals. Then why did you call me, asked Crab. I'm not a crystal. We don't live here like you do, asked, said Pepper Pot. Have you seen any big ones? I have, said Crab. Come with me. Crab scuttled over the rocks towards the cliffs. It sure is windy, he said, looking puzzled, just like a storm, but I don't see any clouds. Crab scuttled into a narrow crack in the cliffs. Pinecone and Pepperpot followed. They had to shuffle sideways just like Crab to get in. After a few feet, 
The crack opened out into a cave. There, said Crab, pointing with his claw to the back of the cave. Now is a good time to see it. The sun shone through the opening and settled on a blue crystal. It was huge. Get close and look inside, said Crab. Pinecone and Pepperpot went and peered inside. It was dark blue, very dark blue, like the sky at midnight. We see stars, shouted the gnomes together. They're twinkling, lots of them. Look more carefully, said Crab, look into the center. The gnomes gazed in hard. A sun, cried Pepperpot, a yellow sun in a blue sky and thousands of stars twinkling. They peered for a long time. They had never seen such a thing. The sun moved in the sky and stopped shining into the cave. It's gone now, they said, disappointed. You can always come back, said Crab. We will, oh, we will, replied the gnomes, and followed Crab out of the crystal cave. I think we will stop right there. 20 minutes of reading is pretty good. The next chapter is called Jeremy Mouse Picks Blackberries, and we will pick that up tomorrow.